Welcome everybody. Heard a gents of finance guy from the YouTube getting freaky finance in your face for you. Today we're going to do a book review and we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of the companies in this book and how they're relevant to our lives. So the book I cover that I'm covering is this Dream Big and it's basically about these three Brazilian guys. I've just finished reading it. it took me 2 years to finish. Um, not because it's particularly long or difficult. It's actually quite a nice reading book, but just because I haven't been getting enough time to do reading. And I think reading is actually very important. So since I've been structuring my life a little bit better, making space on particularly Sundays to do all kinds of other activities um, where I've managed to create a bit of time in my, in my life for, for reading. Story is basically that these guys... Um, started an investment back an investment bank a little while ago 20 20 30 years ago and they developed an extremely powerful culture within this bank and that culture was based on a couple of things um, particularly meritocracy meritocracy is effectively promoting people with merit so and basing the promotion only on merit so if you have been able to contribute to the company's profits or achieve a certain amount of workload or have a certain competency, then that is what gets you the promotion. And you think that's pretty logical, but a lot of time in these corporate structures, it's more about the politics, who you're friends with and how you can manipulate the system to climb up the ranks. So they made a very meritoc meritocratic culture. And what they were able to do within that investment bank that they started is actually when they got ventured into into other businesses they carried that corporate culture across and turned a business that was doing all right into a business that did absolutely fantastically because of that culture that they embedded into the new business and when they bought it it was worth a little bit but with the new culture and the new profits the company became worth a lot and that's how they made a huge amount of profit the other big thing was they were huge on cutting costs so they spent very very little on frivolous things in almost nothing and in brazil apparently that was quite a big thing back in the day because everyone wanted this lifestyle where the, the ceos had waiters coming to them they, they had their personal waiter with like white gloves and like serving them champagne for breakfast and stuff like that and these guys literally rocked up in jeans and a t-shirt and just cut costs left right and center and only putting people that actually were prepared to work. So that frugality was another big advantage of their culture. And then the last one also just ambition. Now I think this is actually the key to the success of their last thing that they've done, which I'm going to cover at the end of the video and how it ties into South Africa. And that is creating a corporate culture of ambition and by taking on ambitious daunting tasks and projects it actually allured some of the best brains and the, and the greatest minds to that company to be part of that ambitious project if you just have a normal company that's carrying along and doesn't seem like there's going to be um, space for massive advancement or groundbreaking anything then you're not going to attract people that really want to change the world or people that are going to work that extra effort. So by creating these ambitious goals of just buying a bigger company and a bigger one and, and then take out the, the best company in the world in that segment, they actually attracted great, great employees that way. So how it started is they started this investment bank, um, stockbroking and that kind of thing in Brazil when that first started. And they did quite well with this culture and then they realized that there's a couple of companies that really offered some great value and they started off dibbling dabbling in a couple of brazilian companies um, one that probably everyone will know is havanias the shoe company yeah that one they took them over made them quite successful and then they started getting into beer beer the stuff that we drink at a braai, beer, All right? They they bought a company called Brahma, and Brahma was a local beer company. Brahma then grew quite quite nicely, and then they eventually 
um, took over Antarctica, which is a competitor in Brazil. And then they together were able to be big enough to in, in South America to start attracting this Belgian company. And then they merged with this Belgian company um, called Interbrew. So Brahma and Antarctica, which is Ambev, merged with Interbrew, which became InBev. And InBev took over Anheuser-Busch, which does Budweiser in America. So then, then they took over um, this huge company, which was actually the best-selling beer in the world at that stage, Budweiser. So then it became AB InBev. And they just needed bigger and bigger projects to take on. And by that stage, they had effectively become the biggest beer company in the world. Um, and I'm going to mention the brands just now. You'll see they, they own a lot. Um, I think they also even took over Corona at that stage. But then how it comes to the South African part and how it ties into our, li our lives is that in 2016, they bought S.A.B. Miller, South African Breweries which was one of the biggest companies in South Africa, started like more than 100 years ago for all the thirsty miners in Joburg. Um, S.A.B. Miller was the second biggest brewer in the world at that stage. They had a huge stake in a Chinese brewery. Um, they had kind of like these emerging market type beers. And A.B. Enber stepped up and said, OK, right, we want to buy S.A.B. Miller, the South African born company for 100 billion US dollars, 100 billion. So they were like, boom, took over. And now they are the biggest beer company in the world by such a margin that they actually own half of all the profits in the beer industry in the world. So yeah, very impressive. When AB InBev took over SAB Miller, they, re they basically removed SAB as a share that was able to be bought by South Africans on the JSC. So what they did is they let their new shares, the combined company shares, be available on the JSC so that South African investors can still participate in the growth of, of a company that's done very well for them up until they were bought. SAB Miller was, was a darling of the market. And that new company, AB InBev, is actually the largest company on the JSC at the moment so if you look at the jsc ab InBev will be at the top if you look at the largest companies in that order and now you know the history behind it too by the way they also own or bought heinz and burger king so yeah ambitious um still still going out there lehman who is the guy the original founder of this company is the 30th richest person in the world at about $20 billion. So that's a fun fact. And yeah, um, there's rumors that they might be taking over Coca-Cola soon. So there we go. Um, they can do that and do a lot of these things because of the, the people they met, the connections they made. And one of Lehman's good friends is actually Warren Buffett. So yeah, quite an ambitious story, um, quite a motivational story about, about these, these three gentlemen from Brazil and what they were able to achieve. So dream big, well worth the read, um, especially if you want to get your head around meritocracy and how to structure a corporate culture that is really going to do well and grow into the future. So hope you like that, hope you learned something and see you next time.